What I want to share with you now is the positive reasons why I embrace a Wesleyan approach to the gospel, um, the Bible in general, and theology. And the first thing to say is I can't imagine that I could be more merciful or compassionate than God. Now I want you to think about that now. I, I can't imagine that I could be more loving than God, especially since God is defined in the New Testament as love and the great commandment that we are to follow as we emulate God is to love God wholeheartedly and neighbor as self and even love our enemy. Love is freely given and freely received. So the first and most important reason I'm a Wesleyan is because of the character of God, what the Bible says the character of God is, which is love, freely given and freely received. That's the first and most important thing. The second thing to be said is that God is both fair and just and impartial as well. Now, if God is fair and impartial, and we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, on a purely justice basis, nobody should be saved. I mean, God doesn't owe any of us salvation. So it's not a justice issue, salvation. It's not a rights issue, salvation. It's a matter of the mercy and the grace of God. So again, we're back to that character of God, which is love and mercy and grace. That's the nature of salvation. So when we think about that, then the next thing to think about is, what's the relationship between faith and works? According to the Calvinistic message, we are saved by grace through faith alone, and our actions have nothing to do with it. Get that. Our actions have nothing to do with it, either before or during conversion or afterwards. Our behavior is not what it's about, it's about what we believe. Now my problem with that is something John Wesley points out. Have you noticed, he says, that in the Synoptic Gospels, the demons are very orthodox. They know exactly who Jesus is, but he says, but they do not trust that truth and are not saved by it. See, it's not enough to know the truth about God. Do you embrace it wholeheartedly? Do you trust it? Has it transformed you? Has this truth transformed you? According to the Wesleyan approach to the gospel, it's not just about notional assent or even the quantity of things you believe. It's about trusting the truths about God. And that is an activity. That's an activity. This is why somebody like James says, faith without works is dead. So in the Wesleyan presentation of the gospel, there is a balance here. There's a balance between faith and good works. There's a balance between uh, personal spiritual holiness and social holiness. There's a balance between justification and sanctification. There's a balance between God's role in our life and what God enables us to do on behalf of the kingdom and for the sake of his church. So, the thing I like about Wesleyanism is it's not a truncated gospel. It's not just about justification by grace through faith. That's only, as John Wesley says, the front porch of religion. It's not the house. The house has to do with sanctification. It has to do with day-to-day -day holiness. It has to do with growing in grace and in the knowledge of God. It has to do with, yes, gasp, going on to perfection. That is, to being fully conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. This is the goal. The goal is not merely to be saved by grace through faith. The goal is to be conformed to the image of Christ. And that requires our own participation. That requires the imitation of Christ. That's why Paul says in Philippians 2, have this mind in yourself that was also in Christ Jesus who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be taken advantage of, but instead he stripped himself. He emptied himself. 
and took on the form of a human being, even a slave amongst human beings, and he was obedient even unto death on the cross, and that's why God highly exalted him. Now, what Paul's setting up here is a paradigm that he believes Christians can follow. He believes by the grace of God that the imitation of Christ is possible. He believes that God's grace is powerful enough to not only initially transform us, but to continually transform us into his holy image. It's a strange thing to me about Calvinistic theology that they talk so much about sovereign grace, and yet at the end of the day, they don't believe the grace of God can dramatically transform a person even beyond conversion. They don't believe that the love of God can cast out all fear from our life, can cleanse us of all sin in our life. Now that's very strange. The truth of the matter is that the Wesleyan gospel is the one that is most optimistic about the sovereignty and power and grace of God. And that's the chief reason I'm a Wesleyan.